as delightful that Nigeria and Equatorial Guinea have always identified with each other. He said under his watch, such good neighborliness will be maintained towards enhancing the security and socioeconomic benefits for the two countries and their peoples. The president expressed happiness that the outgoing envoy fully understood Nigeria, its people, and culture during his tour of duty. Ambassador Mbengono told the president that Nigeria made a great impact on his life as he learned a lot about what he called this big and important country. The people, he said, are very friendly and warm. Congratulating President Buhari on his re-election, the outgoing envoy expressed the belief that Nigeria is in good hands and Equatorial Guinea is indeed happy. The ambassador conveyed the best wishes of President Theodore Obiang Nguema Basogo to the Nigerian leader. The president also granted audience to one of Nigeria's business moguls, Mr. Tony Elumelu, who called on Nigerians to bury their differences and support the Buhari presidency in the Wanaro's task of taking the country to the next level. But all I know is um, at the heart of Mr. President is economic development of Nigeria, is uh, youth employment, youth engagement, which, as you know, the Tony Elumelu Foundation is also very involved in. We will continue to do our best, we will continue to support government, we will continue to support the Nigerians so that collectively we will create a more prosperous Nigerian society. If you look at what the President has done, in some I have done in the area of agriculture, farmers now be more gainfully uh, engaged. That brings prosperity. We need to add electricity to it. Then we need to add transportation to it. And I tell you, the president legacy is defined. We don't even need to do more. So I think uh, it's a great time for Nigeria. And we need to just all rally around the president. Elections are over and move forward as a team, as a country, uh, so that our people will be better for it. Mr. Elimelu congratulated the president on his re-election and wished him another four successful years in office. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari will depart Abuja Saturday for Jamaina, capital of Chad Republic, to participate in the extraordinary session of the Conference of Heads of States and Government of the Community of Sahel Saharan States, censored. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garbashir says President Buhari and other regional leaders will join their host president, Idris Debe, to deliberate on political and security issues. State of peace and ways to address multifaceted threats in censored areas, especially Boko Haram and refugees. They will also make a declaration on the entry into force of censored reverse treaty intended to fast track the realization of the objectives of the body. During the opening session of the conference, special awards will be given to heads of state and military contingents in Mali, Sudan, Somali, Central African Republic, and in the Chad Lake Chad Basin. President Buhari will be accompanied to the censored meeting by Governors Kashim Shatima of Borno, Akimumi Ambodi of Lagos, and Adek Boyega Oyetola of Osho State. Vice President Yami Oshibajo is scheduled to visit Kano this Saturday and Governor of the state, Abdullahi Umar Ganduja, says the people are ready to receive him into the ancient city. He says the people, through their votes in the elections, express appreciation to the Buhari administration, government of the state and the party for providing good governance. When they come forward, we even sign an MOU, we are going to work together. And uh, even the stalwarts in the PDP will invite them later to come and join us so that we make Kano great. We have built a solid foundation in the development of Kano, especially in the infrastructural facilities, education and health. So we are taking Kano to the next level. Mm. We'll, be, we'll see the gaps that are existing in terms of development and see how we can fill in and make Kano greater. The governor says he is optimistic that committed technocrats will form part of the president's list in the new cabinet. I think what is important is to get brains, committed people who are experienced, who are achievers. I think that is what we need at this moment. Governor Abdullahi Ganduje spoke to State House correspondents after a courtesy call on the vice president in Abuja. 
The week-long induction chaos for newly elected national legislatures has ended in Abuja with stakeholders emphasizing the importance of capacity building of lawmakers to enhance progress in lawmaking for good governance and making them responsive to local and global demands. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports on the orientation program done in two badges by the management of the National Assembly. Mindful of the large turnover of lawmakers after each general election, the National Assembly, in conjunction with Policy and Legal Advocacy Center, with the support of the United Kingdom Department for International Development, put together this induction program for the incoming 469 lawmakers of the Ninth Assembly that will, in the next four years, occupy the hallowed red and green chambers. Legislative practice and procedure, budget process, constitutional powers of the legislature, bill process and constitutional amendments were among key issues discussed. A number of uh, wrong perceptions that many of us used to have of the National Assembly and uh, the objective of being there and the need to work as a team and the enormous responsibility uh, on our shoulders, uh, we are satisfied that all this has been brought to our attention. Our focus should be uh, also to continue from where the eight assemblies stopped, continue to amend, amend laws. We are going to be working in hand in hand with the executives to see how we can put bills and put stimulus on how to inject these problems and get them away. Female lawmakers are of the view that more needs to be done to address the disproportionate number of women at this level of governance. Since we don't have much women in the legislature, let the executive give more women positions. Because if you look at the ministers, how many of them are women? How many of them? They check the offices where the women are on top. You can see how well those offices are doing. So I'm using this opportunity to call up Mr. President to give more women uh, elect, I mean, appointive positions. The Ninth Assembly will be inaugurated in June 2019. Lami Ali, NTA News. Still with the National Assembly, the House of Reps Committee on National Planning has expressed displeasure at the inability of the Ministry of Budget and National Planning to give full account of the expenditure of 2018 service-wide vote. This was at the meeting or at the instance of the House Committee on National Planning. National Assembly correspondent Omotola Omojola has details. The Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Ernest Umahihe, provided the committee with available expenditure details on the service-wide vote, citing three budget lines as those within the purview of the ministry. Releases are done at the Ministry of Finance. We don't have their vote books and how they are expended. But of particular concern to the ministry are three budget lines other those service-wide votes, national development plans, infrastructure master plan, and service-wide training on budgeting and monitoring and evaluation. The committee, however, frowned at the ministry's inability to provide full details on the expenditure of over 800 million naira released for economic recovery and growth plan for 2018-2019 fiscal year. In government spending, we don't have major even if it is a penny, penny, you must account for it. It's not my money, neither yours. It's government money. And as much as that money comes out from public treasury, you must account for it to the, to the parliament. Though the committee closed the meeting asking the ministry to reappear before it with detailed spending on the ERGP, it however noted that the engagement on the service-wide vote will continue with the Minister of Finance, who was absent at the meeting. From the National Assembly, Omotola Omojola, NTA News. As more ministries continue to defend budgets, Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Usaini Usaini, reiterated the commitment of government to complete ongoing projects in the 2019 budget proposal, especially those kick-started in 2017. This was at the 2019 budget defense before the House Committee on Niger Delta. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Aminu reports. 
Lack of adequate funding, substandard and electrification projects in Bielsa State at the cost of 700 million naira were discussed, out of which 261 million naira was released since 2016. The Minister Usani Uguru Sani said the ministry got 41% release of its capital allocation, 53% of the overhead, and 99% personal release. The ministry's focus, he said, is to complete the projects in this year's budget. It's a basis of assessment because the other uh, ongoing projects to which these payments accrue are still undergoing assessment as on holistic basis, project by project. The committee is not unmindful of the federal government thrust towards ensuring that a greater percentage of the budget is dedicated to capital projects. The committee also received submission on the 2019 budget exmet by the Niger Delta Commission. Members showed preference for the amnesty projects instead of erection structures. They frowned at the 9 billion naira spent on renting offices in benefiting nine states. Meanwhile, the 2019 budget defense by the National Population Commission dwelt on the need for technology-driven census and amendment of the act for the conduct of the exercise. It's something that the legislature can do. In our act, which we have gone through, there is a gap. And that gap does not make census mandatory every 10 years. There will be census and then we can build on the legacy of the census moving forward. Analysis on the impact of the census on the socio-economic and political well-being of every nation also pitted during the defense. From the National Assembly, Abla Yaninu, NTA News. Now to judicial matters. An FCT High Court has fixed next Tuesday for the delivery of ruling in the no-case submission filed by the suspended Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, Monir Gorzo, on alleged fraud. Monir Gorzo and an executive commissioner in the commission, Zakawanu Garuba, are standing trial on five counts charged bordering on alleged misappropriation of 115 million naira and confirmment of corrupt advantage and a public officer upon the arraignment before Justice Husseini Baba Yusuf by the Independent Corrupt Practices and Order Related Offences Commission, CICPC. The defendants pleaded not guilty to the charge. The prosecuting counsel, Adishino Rahim, closed his case, having called five prosecution witnesses. Defense counsel, Abdul Hakim Mustafa Hassan, however, made a no-case submission. The Kogi State National and State House of Assembly Election Petition Tribunal has commenced sitting in Abuja with 16 petitions already received by the tribunal and still expecting more from the supplementary elections. Ali Utuku reports that eight of the petitions are contesting the House of Representatives election in various constituencies, four challenging the State House of elect Assembly elections, while four orders are charged challenging the senatorial elections among the petitions filed is that by Senator Smart Adeyemi of the All Progressives Congress challenging the emergence of Senator Dino Milai of the People's Democratic Party in the Kogi West senatorial elections. The petitioner is alleging overvoting in some local government areas and lack of compliance to court order concerning the coalition process already at the pre-hearing. Parties were served with the petition. I was also saying that there is no compliance with the electoral act. There was a court ruling based on uh, the case filed by my opponents that the collation of the results should be at the central headquarters. Uh, unfortunately uh, for them, they went to a different venue. They went to the state capital local jail to uh, collate the results. Already at the pre-hearing, parties were served with the petition and they have all filed their responses. The 23rd of this month is slated for continuation of pre-hearing. This is the news on the network service of the NTA. The news continues after this time out. Oh, <laughs> 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 
Get five times your recharge value to call all networks without restrictions. Recharge and dial star 234 hash to enjoy this offer. Available to new and existing customers. Airtel, the smartphone network. When I was a little girl, I loved spending time with mum and grandma cleaning the house. I was so excited to sing in the choir. And your shirts are always so white. I knew what mum's secret was. Today, I'm a modern woman that still trusts the secret passed down to me. It's Jig, of course. The original trusted bleach, which can be used all around your house for amazing results. Shh, it's our little secret. It's no secret. It's Jig's best ever extra whitening power. Just Jig it. The Vice Chancellor Osman Nafur University Sokoto Professor Abdullah Abduzuru, on behalf of the Chancellor, Council, Senate, staff, and students, invites the general public to the combined convocation ceremony for the award of degrees, diplomas, certificates, postgraduate degrees, and presentation of prizes to graduates. Honorary degrees would also be awarded to eminent Nigerians for their enormous individual contribution to humanity. Distinguished personalities to grace the occasion include visitors to the university. His Excellency President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR, President Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Chief Host, His Excellency Right Honorable Amin Waziri Tambol, the Executive Governor of Sokoto State. Guest of Honor, Malam Adamu Adamu, Honorable Minister of Education, Royal Father of the Day, Al Haji Muhammad Saad Abu the III, the Sultan of Sokoto. Host, Alailua Obari Luanu Akiolu I, CFR, Chancellor Osman Danford University, Sokoto. Convocation ceremony is scheduled to take place on Saturday, the 13th of April 2019, at the Convocation Square of the Osman Danford University main campus. Time, 9 a.m. prompt. Through Dean Abel, registrar and now, sir. Team Huddle. But we lost. Don't be tired, guys. This isn't a loss. It's a practice for winning. Nothing makes a mother prouder than seeing her child growing up. But I know as he learns to lead, he'll face even more dirt, germs, and risk of illness. That's why in changing seasons, you need strong dental protection. Because dental protects from up to 100 illness-causing germs. Growing up needs dental protection. In today's world, it's tough being a woman. But thanks to So Clean, Nigeria's number one detergent with stain magnet technology, doing washing is a whole lot faster and smarter too. Only So Clean has stain magnet technology with an advanced enzyme formula that out even the toughest trap dirt, just like powerful magnets. No wonder Nigerians love so clean. So clean for a faster, brighter, cleaner wash. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news, don't create it, don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. You are watching NTA Network News. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has emphasized the need for officials of the Federal Road Safety Corps, FRSC, to become an arm carrying agency. This was at a commission of 74 new vehicles, three ambulances acquired by the Corps in Abuja. Oyeyemi Ajayi has details. Officers and men of the Federal Road Safety Corps are said to be exposed to so many dangers in the line of their duties of ensuring safety on Nigerian roads. Findings indicate that they even get knocked down by recalcitrant drivers or get attacked by hoodlums, among other dangers encountered. The campaign for the road safety officials to be allowed to carry arms becomes imminent to ensure that officers are not only protected, but able to defend themselves in the course of duty. At this commissioning of newly acquired vehicles was another avenue for the Corps to herald its desire. 
I wish to categorically decry the rising wave of unprovoked aggression and physical assault on FRSC personnel performing their lawful duties. They often result in death or severe injuries on the hapless FRSC personnel. We have substantially improved urban mobility and road safety within the city through rigorous expansion in the road networks. Prompt highway maintenance and the provision of relevant road furniture, including road markings and standard traffic signs and symbols. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, while commending the call for strides achieved so far, reiterated government's desire to provide logistics to the call in carrying out its duties targeted at ensuring zero accidents on Nigerian roads. So the government will look at the prospect of making sure that they are properly secured, if it means arming them. Uh, they have requested for it, uh, but I think it is under consideration. We are getting more support now from the state governments and the Honorable Minister of FCT. So we, we are going to embark on motorized patrols. The commission vehicles will be distributed to the 18 corridors across the country to support the unit commands and outposts across the six geopolitical zones. In Abuja. Oye Yemi Ajayi, NTA News. Now, so to security matters in continuation with operations designed to mitigate banditry activities in Zamfara and other contagious states, troops of Operation Sharon Daji have been dominating the area of operation with aggressive fighting patrols. In a statement by Acting Force Information Officer Operation Sharon Daji, Major Clement Abedi, the intensity and redoubled efforts in the conduct of these military activities is being complemented by Harbin Kunama III. The air component of Operation Sharon Daji carried out several air strikes around Kagara, Gandu, Fangama, Fete, and Dumburum forests, which served as sanctuaries and hideouts, where kidnapped victims are often hiding. 35 victims were neutralized while 18 suspected bandits, information, rustlers, kidnappers and logistics suppliers were arrested, including one Mohammed Iso, a notorious kidnapper who was intercepted in Niger Republic through collaboration with the security forces in the country. The suspects arrested have been handed over to Nigerian police and other agencies for further investigation and possible prosecution. Subsequent operations in the forest led to the rescue of 40 abductees from communities in Zamfara State. Troops of Operation Sharon Daji also recovered ammunition, 10 motorcycles, 94 rustled animals, assorted charms, two handsets. In the wake of recent successes of Operation Duran Mikia, at obliterating bandit bases in northwestern Nigeria, the Nigerian Air Force NAF has described as false some media reports insinuating that the recent airstrikes conducted by its air tax force killed innocent civilians in the area, attacked rather than bandits. NAF Director of Public Relations and Information Air Commander Ibukule Daramola in a press release described such reports as unfunded because most of the locations attacked are within the Rugu, Sububu and Kwagara forest areas which are known as um, bandit handouts that has been attacked in the past without any outcry. Furthermore, the NAF target selection process for air operations is particularly rigorous and methodical in order to ensure proper target identification and thereby prevent strikes on wrong locations. Nigerians should therefore rest assured that the locations attacked from 8 to 11 April 2019 were selected based on human intelligence, humid. Reports obtained from security agencies and other government sources, traditional and community leaders, as well as reliable vetted information, the NAF will sustain its air operation to facilitate a return to normalcy that will enable residents in the area pursue their legitimate aspirations, as its personnel continue to sacrifice towards eliminating all threats to the security and indeed the development of our beloved country. The reconstruction of the Enugu Onicha Expressway is ongoing. Joe Ilobu reports that significant progress has also been made on the construction of the second Niza Bridge. For many commuters like 46-year-old Chie Dozie Wogu, who ply the Enugu Onicha Expressway daily as a commercial driver trying to make ends meet, it's a big relief to see the Anambra section of the Enugu Onicha Expressway wearing a new look, especially the Omonya Okuzo axis on the Enugu bound, which used to be traveler's nightmare. This uh, road they are walking, 
I like it. Because he will give us a chance. No go slow. And they are doing a great job on the road. We thank the government for no risk. We stopping the road. Because it has been long we've been suffering on this road. Diversions like this have become a common feature of the Enugu Onicha Expressway. With the level of work ongoing right now, it is the expectation of commuters and users of the road that when completed, this major problem will be solved. You can see a lot of concrete works, asphalt works, uh, stone base, soil cement stabilization. If we continue this way, I'm sure in a very short time we'll complete this Enugu band of the road. Another key project of the federal government in the state, which is also going on simultaneously with the road reconstruction, is the construction of the second Niger Bridge, which is now at 22% completion seven months into the main work. The target of the contractor now is to pile across and construct some of the structures above the pile before the next uh, flood level. Uh, during the rainy season, we cannot work uh, in the river foundations anymore, uh, uh, but on the piers, earthworks will uh, slow down. Uh, we are going to focus on the soil improvement measures. With a completion period of three and a half years, the bridge, when completed, will help ease traffic on the existing Niger Bridge constructed many decades ago. In Oka, Joy Ilwebu, NTA News. Still on infrastructure, Minister of Transportation Rotimi Amechi has directed the Nigerian Railway Corporation to commence full-scale commercial activities on the Itakwe Wari Ajakuta rail line, ending the five months train ride to passengers on the axis. The minister who gave this directive while inspecting the ongoing construction of stations disclosed that about $3 million is needed to link the rail project from Itakwe to Abuja. Oninaya Kalu Oka reports. Handshakes of gratitude from community leaders in Abo to the Minister of Transportation, Rotimi Amechi, in appreciation for the fast pace of work at the Itakbe Warrior Jekuta Rail Line project that was abandoned for more than 30 years. No, 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 because the Minister, while inspecting the nearly completed 12 modern stations, was happy that the project will soon take off as 80% of the work has been completed. But he was quite unpleased with the slow pace of work at the stations, which he attributed to lack of fund. I'm delighted that it's functioning. I'm delighted that carrying passengers. They say they carry an average of 100 passengers in a day, which means we need to do more. We're going to have financial problems. They are reporting now that they've not been paid for some time, so we really need to look for money to pay them. Linking Itakwe, Lokoja, Abuja, people can joyfully ride the train from Wari to Kaduna. The Itakbe Ajakuta Wari Rail Project is a massive one, covering about three states of the Edo, Delta, and Kogi. And we're here in Abo Station, which is one of the main stations. And as you can see, work is ongoing here, creating employment for hundreds of people. Around this place before, everything, everywhere was bushy. But toward the benefit of itself that we have on this project today, you will see that everything is very looking fine. Running through more than 40 communities in the three states, the project is expected to transport passengers along the axis, steel from Ajekuta as well as foodstuff from the south to other parts of the country. For about five months, the Itakbe Wari Ajekuta rail line has been on a test run, taking passengers for free. More than 2,000 passengers so far have been transported in the 49 trips. Oyinaya Kaloka, NTA News. Thank you, Oyinaya. Circle has come the way of flood victims in Niger State with the presentation of relief materials worth millions of naira by the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, Nimasa. Daudo Mohammed reports that the items were presented to the state government by the representatives of the DG Nimasa, Lami Tumaka. Since the 2018 floods that affected most states in Nigeria, different organizations have in their own way assisted the victims. The Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, as part of its corporate social responsibility, is providing relief materials to 20 states across the country that have witnessed natural disasters or suffered displacement due to insurgency. 
Nimasa Director of Special Duties, Lami Tumaka, while presenting the items to Niger State Acting Governor Ahmed Mome Kisu, described the gesture as part of the agency's way of cushioning the sufferings of the people which will be sustained. Corporate social responsibility is all about sustainability. So we started this last year with about 11 states, 11 to 15 states, and then this year we increased the number to 20 states. Acting Governor of Niger State, Ahmed Mohamed Kitsu, appreciated the gesture and assured that the items will get to those in need. We took the inventory of those that were affected and uh, we decided whatever we have, even from the state government, the federal government, we share this according to the inventory we took, the spot assessment of all those that are affected. The Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency is responsible for regulating Nigerian shipping, maritime, labor, and coastal waters. The agency also undertakes inspection and provides search and rescue services. In Mina, Dauda Mohammed, NTA News. Update on UME and all reports from our Lagos Network Center with Jennifer Igwe. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you, Jumai. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. Decongesting the nation's seaports in Lagos is an ongoing process of the federal government as a number of options are being explored. Chairman of the Board of Ports Authority, of Ports Authority Emmanuel Adesoye, while on an oversight visit to Tinkan Island and at Papa Ports, assured stakeholders of an imminent end to the challenge. Paul Omukago has details. The difficulty experienced by the business community and operators within and outside the port areas necessitated the intervention of the federal government. Reconstruction of a Papa Wharf Road and bridges along the stretch was part of steps taken to decongest the ports. While admitting that there are improvements in terms of movement in and out of Tinkan and Papa Ports, the MPA board chairman appealed for more understanding as efforts are on to improve infrastructure. Apart from extending the standard rail project to the ports and awarding contracts for expansion of roads from Apapa to Uroshoki, the use of barges to move containers and other goods from Ikurudu and Kirikiri lighter terminals, the board chairman stress, will reduce pressure on the roads. Where the solutions to the gridlock is uh, currently being addressed, the only way is to, when there is little road, the only thing is to create more roads. And that is exactly what the government of Nigeria is doing through the Ministry of Works and Housing and also the Ministry of Transportation. But more importantly, when goods begin to move by barges into other parts of the town and, uh, and the railway lines move, uh, you know, uh, products or, or containers from the uh, Apapa port to the interland, then you will begin to feel the relief. The team access facilities at Tinkan and Apapa ports and took note of salient points raised by the management of the ports, particularly maintenance and renovation of existing infrastructure. In Lagos, Paul Omukago, NTA News. And to education, the ongoing Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination organized by the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, JAMB, has continued without hitches across designated centers in the Lagos metropolis. Jane Ojuko, who monitored the examination in some of the centers, reports. The ambience at some of the CBT centers visited was calm and peaceful, with the candidates fully engrossed in maximizing the two-hour duration of the examination to make decisive efforts at qualifying for university admission. We went to say and that after one, but actually they told us not to carry our wristwatches, and, and so I actually don't know if we actually want it. But I guess, yes, so I actually want to start it. So this will be my second time. So yes, I'm prepared, actually. So far, each center has recorded five examination sessions. Three on Thursday, the first day of the examination, and two on Friday to enable Muslims an interlude for the Friday Jumat prayers. On the alleged clash of the UTME and the West African Senior School Certificate Examination Timetable, the JAMP technical officer at one of the centers reacts. Ever since we started, since yesterday, we had first section, second section, and third section. This morning again, we had a section, and this is the second section going on. No candidate have ever said that they are why can JAMP clashed. Meanwhile, 
no case of network downtime was reported at the centers visited. In Lagos, Jane Ujuku, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. More reports ahead, but first, a break. Stay tuned. Family is under threat by germs. Infectious diseases are now the world's biggest killer of adults and children. These infectious diseases are caused by germs. They are everywhere. An average human being comes in contact with over 1 million germs daily in unclean water, dirty surfaces, in the toilets, on cuts and wounds, on your clothes. Germs can cause deadly diseases like typhoid, diarrhea, flu, and cough. To protect your family from germs, use the power of Dettol's one cup food for surface cleaning in your bathing water, in your laundry water, for first aid to protect your family from up to 100 illness causing germs. Introducing Dettol Antiseptic Liquid in Sachet for only 40 naira, endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. Getting around heartburn and indigestion can be tricky if you eat too much. Eat food that is too spicy or greasy or lie down after eating. Heartburn and indigestion could always be around the corner. When they come, be prepared with Gaviscon Double Action. It works within three minutes and lasts up to eight hours. Gaviscon Double Action. Many causes, one solution. Here you go. Madam. That's it. Those narrows I know. Hi, dear. Helen! You've got so much even after spending so little. Savings is such a necessity. You save everywhere, but here, you lose it all. How? With this? Impossible. New Tika Apic 10X. Even after applying up to one liter of your solution multiple times, you won't get the same cleaning that Apic gives you in a single round. And the expense? Far less compared to your one liter of solution. New Tika Apic. Top and cleaning. Top and savings. <laughs> Buy an Airtel SIM to enjoy double data on Nigeria's widest 4G network. Airtel, the smartphone network. I thought leaving the country was the best decision for me and my future. I left for a better life. We were picked up by immigration officials and sent to a detention camp. I spent eight months in the detention camp. There was no food, no water. I saw people being beaten like animals. Some women were raped. Some women were sold as slaves. I thought I would never see my loved ones again. I have made the biggest mistake of my life. I have wasted all my savings. I have to start all over again. Migration is a human phenomenon which cannot be stopped. But if we choose to migrate, we advocate that it should be done in a safe, orderly, regular and dignified way, and not in a dangerous and tortuous manner. This message is brought to you by the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons. Good morning, sir. <laughs> You're here already? No. Now my spirit day, my body day for house. What kind of question is that? Were you not the one that fixed this meeting for 8 a.m.? You are now coming by 10 a.m. And start asking me uh, uh, job questions. Not bad, Chief, now. I'm sorry. Don't you also go late for meetings sometimes? You know now, African time thing. No more African time. And no more pancaking of face during office hours. At the end of the day, we will lose valuable time. We will not make progress. If we want to move this nation forward, we must treat business as business and respect time. Change begins with me. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry. Can we go for the meeting now, Chief? Better. 
This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency in conjunction with the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. And for more news from the financial sector, let's join Ibola J. Salami. Thank you, Jumai. Good evening and welcome to Business News segment. The 2.1% GDP growth forecast by the International Monetary Fund for Nigeria in 2019 is predicated on improvements in the prices of oil at the international market. Economic analyst Johnson Chuku is, of, is however of the view that Nigeria stands a better chance of boosting a revenue base as well as reducing budget deficits if earnings are well utilized. The key assumptions projected are 3.01% GDP growth for the 2019 fiscal year due to an improvement in various economic fundamentals in the country. In January of the same year, the International Monetary Fund, in the wake of the fall in crude oil prices, came up with a 2% GDP forecast for the country. A few months down the line, IMF, at the ongoing spring meeting with the World Bank in Washington, D.C., projected an increase of 2.1% GDP growth. Economic analyst Johnson Chuko said, what should be of great concern now is how to cut down on recurrent expenditure and budget deficits of 3.7 trillion naira in order to build an improved GDP growth. Take for instance 2018. Uh, total revenue in 2018 was uh, 3.9 trillion naira. Um, recurrent expenditure in 2018 was 3.2 trillion naira. Debt service was 2.2 trillion naira. So. If you look at the total revenue vis-a-vis -vis the expenditure in Kyolas of September 2018, the government had recorded a budget deficit of more than 3.7 trillion naira. Um, so a budget deficit that is almost 100% of the revenue is unsustainable. And that's why the uh, IMF recommended the government should tighten fiscal uh, policies. He said Nigeria has a strong revenue earning capacity with the improvement in oil price at $71 a barrel if channeled to productive resources. The federal government bond market at the close of Friday's session witnessed buying interest of some maturities with yields slightly lower by six basis points. The treasury bill market remains relatively quiet with some profit taking on short and mid tenured maturities, thereby increasing yields marginally higher by five basis points. And now let's cross over to the capital market. The Nigerian equities market has retained its bullish run for the third day trading session in the week. Here's today's trading. The capital market closed the week trading in the green, appreciating by 0.73% to close the all share index at 29,000 psychological line. Volume of shares traded stood at 232 million, valued at 1.97 billion naira, which exchanged hands in 2,677 deals with a market capitalization of 11.1 trillion naira. Mobile, Nestle, and Dangote Cement were in the green territory, while FBNH, NEM, and Ikeja Hotel closed the session in red. Virtually all the sectors closed in the green, as NSE Banking, Consumer Goods, NSE Industrial, NSE Oil and Gas, and NSE Pension appreciated by 0.97%, 0.61%, 0.77%, 0.77% and 0.64%, while only NSE insurance finished in red, depreciated by 2.79%. And that's a wrap on business news. News continues with Juma in Abuja. Good evening. Thank you very much. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, says sub-Saharan Africa is recovering amidst elevated uncertainty, stressing that nations along the Lake Chad Basin have to work closely in tackling insecurity that is hampering rapid developmental growth. Leah Katum Baba today reports. Economic recovery in Africa is seen as a continuous one with dichotomy in performance and prospects. Though the regional outlook for sub-Saharan Africa sees growth picking up from 3.5% in 2019, the numbers mask quite a number of differences in terms of outcomes across the region, with some 21 countries projected to grow by as much as 5%. 
Due to the peculiarities of the region, the fund prefers to deal with individual countries in specific terms, giving Nigeria past market efforts by government to promote job creation outside the oil and gas sector, as contained in the ERGP. We welcome uh, the efforts the government has been making to improve, um, uh, you know, to tackle corruption, to improve governance in the country. We very much welcome the emphasis on uh, in public investment. What remains, we think, in terms of priorities going forward really is trying to make sure that government regenerates more uh, resources uh, that it can use to invest um, in health, in education, in, uh, in further infrastructure. So tackling the revenue side of the equation um, is really what's really important. The director of the African Department of the IMF, Abebe Amr Selassie, says the fund wants Nigerian authorities to do more in strengthening the excess crude account, which serves as a buffer for rainy days, and improve efforts with countries in the Lake Chad region to tackle security challenges affecting developmental growth. Frankly, what's needed, of course, is addressing directly those uh, the, the conflicts and minimizing the spillovers. Um, that they're having on the populations, but also it points to the need for our development policies to be much more inclusive, to try and address the poorest parts of our countries, uh, the development challenges that uh, face uh, the poorest parts of our countries. The fund sees sluggish growth in many commodity exporting countries, Nigeria, South Africa, and Angola inclusive, that jointly account for 50% of the region's outputs. From the IMF headquarters in Washington, D.C., I'm Leah Cutting, Baba Tunde, NTA News. And here is a fake news alert. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, has appealed to Nigerians to discontent rumored fuel scarcity trending on social media. The NNPC, in a release this evening by its group general manager, Group Public Affairs Division, Undu Ugamadu, explained that it has over 1 billion litres of petrol in stock, while imports of 48 vessels of 50 million litres each have been completed for the month of April alone. Not in that there was no need for panic buying or hoarding of petroleum products in anticipation of a phantom scarcity. The NMPC spokesman said the pump price of petrol remains 145 naira per litre. There is a projection for more youth empowerment in 2019. Caleb Injos is standing by to give us this and more. Hello. to sustain the existing momentum in its program implementation to ensure that more successes are recorded in the 2019 program year. Director General of the Fund, Joseph Ari, said this at the organization's annual review meeting, where he recommended the management and staff for their teamwork. I covered the event for NTA News. It is to avoid mistakes of the past that the ITF Chief Executive, Sir Joseph Ari, underscored the importance of the meeting, which he noted has contributed immensely to the achievements in ITF. He said the impact of the various trainings offered by the fund to Nigerians cannot be quantified, as many citizens are either gainfully employed or are self-employed as a result of the various skills acquired. He said in 2018 alone, hundreds of thousands of Nigerians were trained, mostly the vulnerable groups in the society. We stepped up efforts towards full automation of our processes with the launching of the Enterprise Resource Planning ERP. The ERP is a digital resource designed to ease how our day-to-day -day activities are carried out. And in demonstration of his penchant for excellence, the meeting shifted from the ITF Center of Excellence, Bukuru, to its corporate headquarters in Jos, where awards were doled out for outstanding performance. Year 2018 requires to be celebrated as it came with its own unique challenges that tested us as individuals and as a corporate entity. Legas office emerged overall best in training contribution Several other offices were also rewarded as they met their marks in different categories. The National and State Assembly Elections Petition Tribunal in Plato State has received 21 petitions challenging the outcome of some of the elections held in the state. 
Secretary of the Tribunal, Washington, Ugu, made this known at the tribunal complex at West of Mines, Jolts. Mary Dom Tour reports that the tribunal will commence sitting on Monday the 15th. The 21 petitions has four for senatorial, nine House of Assembly, and eight for House of Representatives. Mr. Washington explained that the tribunal is yet to receive any petition on the governorship elections as the tribunal is currently sitting outside pre-hearing sessions to determine any motion relating to the governorship elections. He, however, noted that the People's Democratic Party and its gubernatorial candidate in the just-concluded governorship election in Plateau State secured a tribunal order and leave to inspect and make copies of all pooling documents relating or pertaining to the 9th and 23rd March elections in custody of the Independent National Electoral Commission. In just, Mary Domtur, NTA News. And that's it from Jaws, but uh, Mohammed Ibrahim is in our Medugri Network Center. Hello, Mohammed. Hello, Caleb, and thank you for joining us in Medugri. The Nigerian Army has relocated residents of Jakana Village in Konduga local government area of Borno State back to their community after spending three days in Bakasi IDP's camp in Medugri to enable the military conduct general clearance operations in the general area. Mehmuna Garba reports. It will be recalled that on Tuesday 9th of this month, troops of Operation Lafi Adole have relocated residents of Jakana to Bakasi IDP's camp in Meduguri for the purpose of conducting clearance operation in the Axis and to save the lives of the residents pending the completion of the operation. Consequently, the Nigerian army has relocated the residents back to Jakana. Monitoring the relocation exercise Thursday morning, Chief of Staff Serving Division Nigerian Army, Brigadier General Sunday, enjoined the people to support the military, especially in providing necessary information to security agents, stressing that the military will not relent in routing the insurgents from the general area. Addressing the returnees, Council Secretary Kondiga Local Government Area, Ahmed Indava, commended effort of the Nigerian Army to rid the area of terrorism. While commending the good conduct of the residents during their short stay at the Bakasi IDP's camp, the secretary enjoined them to continue to be law-abiding and support the military's quest in clearing the area of insurgent. Village heads in Jakana assured the military of their continued support, saying they will provide credible information that will assist in their operations. In my degree, Maimuna Garaba, NTA News. And that's all for our contribution. The rest of Network News continues in Abuja. Thank you, Mohammed. Nigeria has been drawn alongside Guinea, Madagascar, and Burundi in Group B of the 2019 African Cup of Nations after the draw was conducted in Cairo, Egypt, Friday evening. This year's tournament, which is the first to have 24 nations in contention, has six groups in all. The showpiece will be staged across six Egyptian cities, June 21st to June 19th. On a sad note, the death has been announced of Dr. Janet Ngwazi Aweze Ni Ngwaja, a pioneer director of the National Assembly. Burial arrangements as announced by her family include a service of songs on April 15th at Kado Estate, Abuja, and interment on April 24th in Umwahia, Abia State. The late Janet Ngwazi is survived by her husband, Chief Obiama Ngwazi, a retired news director of NTA, a son, daughters, and many relatives. And a quick check on the weather prospect for Saturday. Hello, it's time for the weather focus. I am Suleiman Gulam.